Hello guys, this is me Dr. KQ. We were discussing the blood disorder in which we have discussed the anemia, uh, the further classification of the anemia, in which we have discussed the hemorrhagic anemia, hemolytic anemia. Now today we are going to discuss the inherited hemolytic anemia. Inherited hemolytic anemia also involves the hemolysis of the RBCs but the factors involved here are the red cell membrane defect or either it may be the abnormality the, uh, of the hemoglobin or their maybe another reason so coming to the first one which is the hereditary spherocytosis which is uh, actually a red cell membrane defect in which the red blood cells which are biconcave usually uh, becomes the spherocytic in nature so this hereditary spherocytosis is the most common inherited hemolytic anemia and it is inherited in a manner which is autosomal dominant in uh, most of the cases it is autosomal dominant while in some cases uh, in 25 percent of the patients neither parent is affected and it is presumed that hs is caused by some auto mutation or it is totally uh, recessive disorder hs is the defect in the cell membrane and this cell membrane is losing some of its part while passing through the spleen so these cells are more uh, rigid and they are uh, spherocytic in nature and they cannot pass through the micro circulation of the spleen that's why they have the very short lifespan as this is a defect in the red cell membrane there is a deficiency of structural protein called spectrin uh, but uh, there can be a quantitative defect in the uh, protein which is the most common called the anchirin or a band 3 in hereditary spherocytosis the cells become spherocytic and they are less deformable and they cannot pass through the microcirculation of the spleen. Coming to the clinical features of the patient, when the uh, hereditary spherocytic patient comes to you in a clinic, he will present you at birth, he will present you a jaundice and the onset of jaundice can be delayed for many years in the life. Some of the patient can go through the life without any symptoms, but and we are going to study the family history of that person that hereditary spherocytosis can be detected at that time so the second one here is the anemia the patient will be anemic splenomegaly and ulcer can also be seen on the legs there is also an increased risk for aplastic anemia for uh, some of the infection like due to the parvovirus and there will be the increased chances of the bilirubin gallstone formation moving next what are the different investigation we will do for this patient of hereditary spherocytosis. When we will see blood film, the blood film will show the spherocytic nature of the RBCs and some reticulocyte will also be present over there. So moving next, that is the, the increased serum bilirubin and urobilinogen. This will be raised when we are going to investigate about the serum level of these two, uh, that is bilirubin and urobilinogen. This is due to the increased hemolysis, which is occurring in case of HS. Osmotic fragility test will show uh, the diagnosis. When we place the normal RBC in a hypotonic solution, it will not lie, but when we place the uh, spherocytic cell in the hypotonic solution, it will lie, and this will show that this is not tolerating the hypotonic solution. Moving next is the management. Splenectomy is indicated and it will relieve the symptoms of the anemia, splenomegaly and the reverse reactions of the formation of the bilirubin gallstones. So, splenectomy should be proceeded by proper immunization and by the use of the penicillin for prophylaxis. This is all about today. I hope you like my video. Thank you very much for watching.